Welcome, horse lovers. And for all you non-horse lovers, welcome to hell. Every once in a while, I decide that I'm going to do a big project and I get all excited and I acquire supplies and I usually spend quite a bit of money online getting myself all set up for this new project. And this time, what I did was I bought all of the books in the Pony Pal series. And that what I want to do is read them and talk about them with you. Maybe you read them when you were a kid. Uh, I read maybe like the first six or, oh Jesus, over in this area over here. Oh, so difficult to gesture. So Pony Pals is a scholastic series. It's very sort of like early middle grade, maybe even late elementary school actually is what I would say. Let's see if it has like a, an age suggestion on here. It's pretty young. We have very simple sentences, but it revolves around three girls who are the Pony Pals, not to be confused with the Saddle Club, a rival book series. There's a lot of tension in the Pony Pals versus Saddle Club community. And I'm not anti-Saddle Club, but I, I don't know, I kind of just wanted to explore Pony Pals as a series. So what I want to do is read and review and post a video for each so that we can explore them together. This, this cover is like burned into my memory. I read the first six quite a bit, never got much beyond that, but this is Lulu. Lulu? Yeah. She has a, like a longer, uglier name, but her name is Lulu. And this is not her pony yet, because clearly she wants a pony right now, but eventually this will be her pony. I remember when I was little, the thing that I really liked about this series is that it's very aspirational. Lulu wants a pony. I wanted a pony. I still want a pony and I'm a millennial, so I'm never going to be able to afford that shit. So reading a Pony Pals book really transports you into a time and a place where not only do you have a pony, but you can have like adventures and go off on your own and have all kinds of mysteries because owning them does not necessarily mean you're going to be having fun adventures with a club of your friends where you can just kind of go off and do whatever. A lot of the time what owning a pony or a horse really looks like is you board them at a barn or stable, you take lessons maybe once or twice or three times per week, and in those lessons it's pretty structured. You are doing what an instructor tells you. You might be able to kind of have some free time and ride on your own and do trail rides, but I think for a lot of people who end up riding horses, it's a little less of like a freeing and like fantastical and adventuresome experience than one might have wanted or think. And there's still a lot of joy to be had. There's a lot of ribbons to be won. Please don't be impressed. They hand these out like candy. You get your cool numbers that you put on your back. You wear your like weird British clothing. I got these used when I was showing with my college and I, to be honest, I've never washed them. But, you know, it is what it is. So yes, like I said, my goal with this project is to read every book in the Pony Pal series. There are 38 in the main series, and then I think there's about six super specials really following in the footsteps of like the Babysitter's Club where they have the standard series and then some bonus ones that are maybe extra special or a little bit longer or in a different format than the regular series. So what I'm going to do is read them and then post a video for each. I'd like to talk a little bit about what happens in them, my impression of them, and then also sort of rate them. So far my goal with the ratings is to kind of rate them in several different areas depending on what each book talks about and how the series evolves over time. But right now I'm thinking realism, engagement factor, creativity, cover art, believability, I guess that's kind of like realism. Basically, I'm hoping that this series, from what I remember, it does lean a little bit more towards this, but I'm hoping that it's going to be somewhat realistic in terms of like how horses act and what they do. Whereas some other like child oriented horse series that I've read or watched, the horses are super anthropomorphized, which is fine if that's what you're into, but it is kind of weird to me when it's not like a fantasy or magical world and the horses are like neighing in response to everything that the characters say and like nodding their head in agreement. I'm just like, that doesn't happen. 
horses like neigh a lot less than you think and when they do they sound like terrifying dinosaurs most of the time so i'm looking for more of like a a terrifying dinosaur representation of horses in this series is i guess is what i'm saying and from what i remember it is it is somewhat like that so yes i'm excited to embark on this pony filled journey with you i guess i mean i guess i can read all the titles like just to kind of give you a little teaser i think all of them maybe not all of them virtually all of them have pony in the title very on brand very on trend so let's just do this shit. give you a little taste of what's to come oh and and this is the author Jeannie Betancourt and I haven't really researched her so that's something I want to do as well is kind of see what her deal is is she a horsey person is she just kind of like monopolizing on the popularity of horses I know that after Pony Pals, she since started writing another series of books. And if I, when I show you the covers of those, they're very like much more oriented to today's aesthetic. Whereas this is very much like a babysitter's club type aesthetic. But we've got, I want a pony. Some of the titles are funny because they're like weird phrases. Um, a pony for keeps. This is also a pretty good cover. Hell yeah. A pony in trouble. Uh-oh. Give me back my pony. This I like the ones that are ominous phrases like that. Pony to the rescue. Yeah, okay. Too many ponies. Runaway pony. Goodbye pony. The wild pony. Don't hurt my pony. That's another. <laughs> I haven't read that one, but I'm really excited. Circus pony. Seems like a little bit hokey. Keep out, pony. The girl who hated ponies. Clearly not me. That's okay. First third. God, if you stick with me through reading this entire list of titles, then maybe you'll actually watch my reviews. Because, uh, hmm? Pony Sitters. It would be really cool if this one was a Babysitter's Club crossover, but I highly doubt it. Uh, the Blind Pony. The Missing Pony Pal. Detective Pony on case. The saddest pony. I feel like the saddest pony sometimes. Moving pony. Stolen ponies. The winning pony. Western pony. We're like, we're in the middle now. She's like, mm, what else are we gonna write about? The pony and the bear. Unlucky pony. This is actually a fairly late one, but I did have this one. I don't remember anything about it, but I had, I had one or two that were not the first six. The Lonely Pony. Movie Star Pony. The Pony and the Missing Dog. Home stretch, y'all. There's a lot of books on my lap. The Newborn Pony. Oh, actually, you know what? This is not going to be a complete list because oh, finding all of these was actually quite difficult. I got a lot of 25 of them on eBay, which was the majority of them. Like I said, there's 38 plus six, is that 44? It's been a long day. But then I had to track down a few individually, including a couple that haven't arrived yet. Um, luckily, most of them I ended up paying only like two or three dollars for, but there was one or two <laughs> that I had to get my hands on because I'm a completionist and, uh, you know, it was a brand new project and everything. Um, I did pay $17 for one of these books, which, yikes. Anyway, pony for sale. Ponies from the past. He's my pony. What's wrong with my pony? Magic pony. I'm so hyped for this one, but it's gonna disappoint me because I just love the like powerful Wiccan energy that, <laughs> that comes from this book, but it's not, it's not about that. Um, the Pony in the Haunted Barn. Ponies on Parade. So that's the end of the regular series. And then I, I have most of the super specials here, but there's a couple that I'm still waiting for. We got the Story of Our Ponies. That's super special number two. The Ghost Pony. The Fourth Pony Pal. Hello. Pony Problem. And then, oh my God. The last pony ride. I'm I'm already so sad about this, and I haven't even like gone on this journey with them through these books. But damn. Um, so yeah, I'm excited that it's like a whole story. Having that last super special be the last pony ride. 
feel like it's nice. I know that it's gonna come to some sort of complete end. And I have to say, before I sign off on this introduction video, that I've basically stolen this idea whole cloth from the Babysitter's Club Club, which is a great podcast where two millennial dudes read through all of the Babysitter's Club books and they do a podcast where they talk about them and they have all sorts of like lore that they make up and it's very good and very wacky. Please start from the beginning because if you don't, <laughs> it's gonna be a bumpy ride. They finished the whole Babysitter's Club main series. They've done a bunch of the specials. Now I think they're doing like a, a mix of things in that vein. I haven't listened to it in a while, but yes, anyway, I've stolen this idea from them, but I wanted to add some zesty horse flavor and do it visually so I can show off my ribbons. Um, I hardly ever show <laughs> the first, and uh, these are all very low level. So again, do not be impressed by me. And yes, that's it. I'm excited. And I, I guess if you have these for some reason and you want to read along, feel free. I'm going to read one book at a time and then post the video. So your homework assignment will be to read I Want a Pony, Pony Pals book one. And then you can watch the video and then you can move right on to A Pony for Keeps, where Anna's mean ass parents try to take away her pony because she's bad at school, but actually she's dyslexic. Or at least that's what I remember about it. We'll see how that one goes. Bye!